This episode of Redefine is part one of our two-part interview with superstar photographer and director Chase Jarvis, conducted in his very sleek Seattle studio. In our talk, Chase shares his journey to becoming a 10-year overnight success, which included way more no's early on in his career than you might imagine, and how the inspiration for his visionary work comes from outside of the photography industry. You're watching Redefine with Tamara Lackey, presented by Adorama TV. Your studio is ridiculously gorgeous. Thank you very much. I love it. I want a little kitchen in mine now like that. It's good. Because there's always got to be a place to serve guests, a nice little snack or two, or a place to have a cocktail. Yes, a nice yeah. clean beverage. Yeah, clean beverages are good for the soul. So much of my personal inspiration comes from people and ideas and things that are either on the fringe of photography or outside photography entirely. Mm -hmm. And so much of photography and photographers, we spend a lot of time thinking and talking in our own circle, in our own... Get tunnel um, vision. Yeah, it's, it's very much a tunnel vision thing. Yes. And so one of the things that, that has always been a huge inspiration to me is my friends that are outside of the, the photography industry. Right, because, and I think that's brilliant because what I have seen in the photography industry right. is this, um, I don't know if I want to call it, <laughs> I use a different word. Be careful. <laughs> no. What I've seen is this tendency to go very in and get very sheltered and not recognize that most people become incredibly inspired by things outside of their industry, outside of their field. Um, if you look at, uh, I know the executive vice president of Herman Miller, you know the chairs? Yeah, of course. Um, huge photographer fan, very good photographer, and he says that it enables him to keep thinking creatively about business because yeah. he flexes that muscle. And yet photographers sometimes shut down when you're trying to take inspiration from business resources or even musicians or right. filmmakers, right. which those, seems the, close. Yeah, those are things that are really, that's how I, escape is not the right word, but that's how I take travels. That's how I go away from um, the everyday role of picking up a camera and holding it to your face and shooting the thing that you get paid to shoot. Right. Um, to to uh, immerse yourself in, in musicianship or in, in music or in the works of writers or painters or... Uh, or any myriad of things that are outside of this industry that are still creative, yeah. that that pulls on my heartstrings, my brain strings, and and so that's that was really what Chase Jarvis Live has become is a forum for um, me to get to introduce some of my friends to uh, a cross section of the world that they probably aren't normally speaking to, and and vice versa. Right. And I find that everybody takes something really interesting away from it. Yeah. Me included. It's very selfish pursuit. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, there's something <laughs> selfish in there. I guess a lot of the, the, the cross-section of people who are interested in either being a professional creative or an aspiring amateur or, or maybe they just want to take great pictures of their, their friends, their kids, their family or whatever, that all this stuff somehow is easy. Yeah. And it's not. No. It's a very, you know, it's a very, that's one thing that, that uh, I, I struggle with every morning when I wake up is that I'm... I'm I've created something really fun for myself where I get to wake up and do what it is that I want to do every day. But it's still like I feel like I'm digging a 20 year long ditch. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I'm, I'm in the trenches on a day to day basis. Um, I, I have a lot of fancy friends, but I myself am not fancy. Like I can get up and pull my pants on just like anybody else does. To and be fair, he just changed out of a really raggedy t shirt that apparently I've been wearing for days. <laughs> so he's not <laughs> kidding. Know. I'm a dirt bag at heart. <laughs> I want to discount any false ideas or rumors or I, I guess any, any of those things that, that somehow paint what it is that you do or what it is that I do or, or any of the people that are um, achieving some degree of success, whether it be financial, uh, whatever the measure is, that it's, it's hard. Yeah. And it's not hard in a boohoo sort of way, sure. but in a like it's it's the classic ten year overnight success where you're sitting yes. right now with the yeah. show and people love what it is that you do and you have thousands of people who pay attention to listen to your hang on hang on your tweets that there's a, a belief, a pop culture belief that, that just kind of happens and right. and well why don't you tell me how, how long have you been doing what it is that you're doing? Uh, nine years. Nine years. So, so almost ten. Yeah, almost ten. Like it's not like you're clocking in nine to five for ten years. Oh my God. You, you speed that up. Right. What would you say are three great Oof. 
tips, the three, the three guidelines, right? or things like, hey, you know what, just don't do this. An unglamorous tip number one huh? is, and without just calling it hard work, it's like that, that you're going to come across a bunch of, of hurdles, and those hurdles predominantly should be there to keep people who don't want it as much as you do out. And, and I wish I could say that I manufactured that, but that was something that, that really only hit me after the fact, after I, I studied my psyche when I was hearing no, 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 we don't want to hire you, no, we don't like your work, no, we don't want to. And you got that. Oh, of course, absolutely. Well, yeah, it's, you got that. Absolutely, yeah. and, and I think that's, you know, going back to the tenure overnight success thing and going back to the, the there's no charmed existence in this line of work that we're in. What makes you hireable is not necessarily your technical proficiency. Like that is assumed in the same way that if, when a professional golfer steps up to the tee, they're going to hit it down the middle. Yes. That is assumed. That's the get in the door factor. Right. But within the PGA or within photography or within graphic design, there, what, what starts to segment the, the, the spectrum of people who are kicking ass versus the people who are struggling, there's a million factors and reasons, but ultimately, pure technical ability is only one component and it's so many of the other things that are not talked about and one of those things in fact I'd say the key thing is vision how do you see the world mm -hmm. and if how do you, you, see, yeah, see, the you world. see the yeah. world or you see the world or yeah. you see the world and that that is something that no one can ever take away from you and let's talk about failing if we can just for a second yes. because for every time you throw something out in the world if you're just if you just had to hear the word yes, or you just, um, you only felt good about yourself when you succeeded in the classic sense, it'd be a short career. What folks at home shouldn't fear, you should not worry about it, if you can at all avoid it, is that fear of failure. It's mm -hmm. actually being strong enough to go out there and swing and miss, and yeah. step up again and swing and miss, that where that's where greatness can come and it doesn't you know not every every time anybody steps up is not a home run every time right i don't care who you anybody. are anybody yeah and it, it's interesting too because the like anything that you practice the more you practice the better you get at it and it's not that you're getting better at failing but you're getting better at detaching yourself from the sensation of what failure means mm -hmm. and that enables you to try more one of the things that i appreciate and value i'm a living breathing example of it in fact is that there are a million paths these days mm. to get to any one destination and whereas before, you know, in an earlier era of professional creative work, there were very, very subscribed, prescribed paths that you had to travel yeah. on. You had to assist for someone, then you had to, you know, work in a studio, assist for someone, um, be an apprentice, shoot editorial, then shoot commercial, then, sh you know, go off and be able to do weddings or blah, 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 whatever your thing yeah. is. And now, like, not that... There, I'm not saying that there aren't virtues to those established paths, but I am the absolute, I have gone about it a completely opposite fashion from, and sometimes to, to very, to, to much struggle, mm. but I, that I bring something different because of my own personal experience, and you bring something different because of your own personal experience, and all of our paths that celebrate that, like let yeah. that be, let that be, Cool, you know, and so don't feel like you have to, again, talking to the folks at home, take what we're saying with a grain of salt, but the beautiful thing about what it is that we're saying is that there's a million ways, so it's unlikely that what anything that we would say today or at any, any future recording would be classically accurate because it's yeah, just what's worked. Way. Yeah, it's yeah. just what's worked for us. I am, at the end of the day, a maker of things, and the the business that That's is... That's the third point. Be a maker of things. Be a maker of things. Thank you. And she brings it around like a good hostess always does. Be a maker of things. Yep. And, and as a pure maker of things, I wake up in the morning and think, what, what, what is it that I can make today? And part of what... <laughs> Did you like this? Quick, what can I make today? What can I make today? <laughs> We're going to work, folks. No, but, but honestly speaking, the, the... I wake up and that is the mentality that I am... It's in my DNA and yeah. I can't escape it. Um, and the business parts of it, like how to make it something that everybody can enjoy, is something that I've, I've had to bring in some help with. If you do need to bring in a, a business manager or a partner to mm. help you in your photography career and your, your design work that. or whatever, yeah. So. Like, like it almost seems that some of your greatest success were born of 
just trying to, just coming from your heart, genuinely trying to do something. It was innovative. You were making something. You wanted to put it out there. And almost because it originated from such a pure place, yeah. for real. And, and I don't want to just paint it in, well, no, but in altruism. Cause as opposed to sitting down and scheming, how can I monetize this to the X degree and this and that? That's the beautiful part that you start to feel the traction when it starts to work like that. Right. The more you give, the more you get. So, yes. so, so the saying goes. And uh, I find it to be very, very actualized. I find that to be very true. Join us next time for the second part of our interview with Chase Jarvis. And in the meantime, learn a bit more about the Kodak PlaySport. So many new video products are on the market these days, but the Kodak PlaySport lets you take it to a whole new level. Its easy to use recording system is shockproof, dustproof, and waterproof to 10 feet. It's also one of the few consumer cameras with built-in image stabilization for any crazy activity you can imagine. And with the touch of the share button, shocking your social network couldn't be much simpler. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.